Hey everybody, I'm Ebony K. Williams along with Kat Temp and Eric Bowling. Thank you for joining us for a very special edition of the Fox News Specialist, Politics, Justice and Scandal. the July America. We've got a packed show for you today, bringing you everything from politics to celebrity justice, a brand new feature here on our show, and so, so much more. So let's meet today's specialist. He's a former Arizona congressman, a former talk radio sh a show host, and a current host on Newsmax TV, and he specializes, well, in everything broadcasting. J.D. Hayworth is here. She is the author of a book called Government Gone Wild, a contributor at The Hill and an analyst for Capitalism.com, and she specializes in being an obsessed Ron Paul groupie. Kristen Tate is here. <laughs> Love it, Kristen. All right, we'll start tonight with President Trump and his time in office so far, and how we as a show think he's doing. We decided to break things down into three big issues since he's taken office, and we'll even give him a grade. Sound okay? <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Foreign policy is up first. From day one, President Trump has taken a very firm stance on keeping Americans safe and reestablishing the U.S. as the leading global superpower. But his methods of delivery have been, well, a little bit untraditional, to say the least, leaving some to doubt the seriousness of his message. Here's Senator Chris Coons. I continue to be uncomfortable with foreign policy decisions made by tweet. Uh, and I've, um, you know, frankly, uh, candidate Trump said that he would be unpredictable in foreign affairs. And President Trump has certainly delivered on that. Eric Bowling, I heard <laughs> humongous <laughs> Unpredictable. <laughs> Coons, who put that sound bite in the beginning of the show like that? <laughs> no, That's the way know. you want to kick off uh, tr Donald Trump's foreign policy debate. Look, I think he's been the opposite of, of unpredictable. He's been very de decisive. Um, let's not forget 59 Tomahawk missiles being delivered into Syria the night that uh, Chinese Prime Minister Xi was at a dinner, State Department dinner. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget when Kim Jong Un started playing games, started testing uh, rockets, started testing um, nu nukes and whatnot. Donald Trump brought three aircraft carrier groups into the region, into the Korean Peninsula. That's decisive action. That's not inconsistent. But I think that it, just because it's decisive doesn't mean it can't be unpredictable. I mean, Trump has said he wants to be unpredictable, and I think that's an asset in foreign policy. Obama used to announce everything we were going to do before we did it. Or not do. Right, or. true. And I think that made us weaker on the international stage. <laughs> so I think foreign policy is like a chess game, and Trump can utilize the element of surprise to instill a little fear in our enemies. It's, it's the perception. Make our allies respect us. The perception of unpredictability. The fact is that here is a guy who goes with his gut and expresses things not the way that the striped pants bunch at the State Department at Foggy Bottom want him uh, expressed. He comes out and says what is on his mind. It is a language which resonates with much of America, but not with those in diplomatic quarters. Well, right. I think part of it is that he was so anti getting involved in Syria as a candidate and now as the president, a little bit less so. I think that some people might think, what is Trump's doctrine? Because a lot of the things he says, he sounds pretty anti-interventionist, but then he is, as you mentioned, sending all those missiles over there and all of that kind of thing. So I think that might be what people mean by unpredictable. And I think a lot of times what people mean too is just the tweets, the fact that he just randomly tweets things. But I, I don't really have any problem with the tweets. Mm -hmm. I don't I know why people have so, so many problems with the tweets. Well, I think also people are grading him on two different things. Are we grading him on doing what he said he was going to do, which for me, I think he's been very kind of consistent. I agree with you on that, Eric. Or if you're grading him on doing what you personally want your political uh, agendas to be moved forward to look like, then yeah, J.D., I think maybe you're right, uh, certainly. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on this one, Ebony. I, I would not agree with the Syrian policy, mm -hmm. but I would definitely agree with his North Korean policy. This yeah. guy is crazy and he's threatening some of our allies and our troops, so you do what you have to do. As far as Syria, I don't think, and, and you're right, Kat, he said, not, not our war, not our area, yet he sent Tomahawk missiles in. So I'm going to disagree with the policy, but I'm going to give him an A for being consistent on both measures. I agree. I think a lot of people felt like when Donald Trump would go in office um, that much of what we heard on the campaign trail was just pure rhetoric, right? And that he was going to be some different thing once he took uh, opposition, uh, occupation of the Oval. 
that's not been the case. I, I think so much of what we've seen from Donald Trump, with the exception, Kat, I think you're right. There's a bit of a disconnect around the intervention policy. But a lot of what we've seen from Donald Trump has been exactly what he campaigned on. So for that, I'll give him high marks. I think a lot of Trump supporters, to pick up on what you were saying, Kat, are disappointed in what we're doing in Syria. We want to spend resources and energy here at home. I mean, there are so many problems plaguing this nation. We don't need to be the world's policemen. So he does lose points for me on Syria. Why are we even there? I mean, mm -hmm. Russia's there. One of their goals is to take out ISIS. I guess one of our goals is to take out the Assad regime. But if we do that, it could open up a whole Pandora's box of problems. We could get someone worse in there. So I think a lot of Trump supporters want to focus our energy, our money right here at home instead of trying to basically police the world. Very quick, we're going to go around the table and give him a grade on the foreign policy front. Kristen, you first. B plus. Kat? I, I guess, I don't know, C. Hey. Consistency. B, I like B. I like I like foreign countries not knowing exactly. Maybe what a C we're gonna plus. I, it seems pretty similar to the foreign policy of the past. There's nothing really drastically different. Yeah, but, I'd give him a B. Please. I understand we want a great early. Fact is, it's incomplete because we have huh? yet to see him face his first major foreign policy crisis. It's coming. But we have yet to see it come to fruition. All right, Professor Hayworth here. All right, next up, the economy. Candidate Trump ran on reviving the American economy, getting folks back to work, and most importantly, putting your money back in your pocket. So here's his son, Eric, speaking with our very own Maria Bartiroma. Look at the markets. No one wants to talk about it. The Dow, the S&P 500, the, the Russell 2000. I mean, record every, highs. every single one of them is at record highs. I mean, just go open up your 401k. That's all you need to do. Go open up your 401k. You're 20% up or 15% that's up. Right. I mean, this is real money in the pockets of Americans. And that's what he came in to do. So in addition to the soaring market, since President Trump took office, the unemployment rate has dropped to its lowest level since 2001. Nearly 6,000 new jobs have been added. And consumer confidence, well, it's gone up nearly 7%. So I think, Eric, on this one, I don't know how you can see it any other way other than pretty darn you good. You can if you watch the other networks. If you watch the mainstream <laughs> well, media, know all you that. hear is Russia. <laughs> you hear about Russia. Or there's collusion over here. Well, we can't find any collusion. You know, there's obstruction of justice. Well, not yet. But, but you're not hearing any of these numbers that on a week to week basis on a month to month month basis uh, are, are awesome off the charts awesome eric trump talked about stock prices well that's great but that's one part of the economy mm -hmm. the other part of the economy are housing prices people own homes or or, or have assets uh, in real estate that's off the charts on, on on the upper end and the labor market unemployment at 4.3 percent now i know ebony you and i go back and forth on <laughs> who gets credit for that but if you're a business yeah. and you're looking forward you're hiring forward you're not hiring on the on the rearview mirror how do we do yeah. last month yeah. or last year you how are we going to do going forward and based on the rolling back of regular Relations that Donald Trump has done that's a That's much a more that. rosy future in the business environment so you can hire people yeah look I'm always happy when people are at work certainly Kristen and whether it's Obama or, or President Trump that gets the credit for me it doesn't matter I just want us to all be happy that that number is coming down yeah you know? no it's definitely a good sign I think the most effective report card a president can get is the stock market the stock market is giving him an A plus but we have to keep in mind that the stock market doesn't necessarily reflect what's going on in the economy right now but where people think the economy is going so clearly people expect great things under Trump but I mean if we don't get health care reform passed if we don't get tax reform passed we may see a, uh, a correction here in the market and the uh, Congress hasn't been much help Democrats have been obstructionists and uh, the Republicans are pretty much like herding cats but it so is always a challenge happens. this is the thing about living in a constitutional Republic it's not easy to govern that's why it's so fun to campaign but when you're actually sure. serving in office mm -hmm. that's the tough work and in a yeah. free society find unanimity is difficult but you look at 600,000 new jobs and the other thing that Eric brought up the deregulation those are hidden taxes all you need to remember I can tell you this as a former member of the Ways and Means Committee where we cut taxes remember what Milton Friedman said if you want less of something tax it yeah. you take the taxes away you reignite the engines of economic activity in the final analysis it's not Wall Street it's not even Main Street it's your street where the difference is made and you'll see it at home so that's what the American people are waiting on yeah Kat do you have to take yeah I think a lot of people do trust uh, President Trump on the economy and I, like you said this represents confidence people have confidence they're to spend money. Uh, there's two things with Trump. On the one hand, he talks about deregulation, which is amazing and awesome and incredible. I love it when politicians talk about mm -hmm. deregul or deregulation and 
creating jobs that way. I love that. On the other hand, sometimes I feel like he gets too involved in some of the coal industry and things like that. And I don't see how that's different than presidents who have been liberal and gotten involved in green energy and trying to keep those jobs. I think that the less that a president or politician wants to do when it comes to businesses in our country, the better. Yeah, right. and the way he's helping the coal industry is by removing regulations. Right, right, right. And like I said, that part of it I like. That part of it I right. like. Can, can I just very, very quickly, when, when the, 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 if you need a good example of what J.D. was talking about on taxes, New York State is one of the most liberal states in the country. It always goes for the Democrat. New York State, in order to entice businesses here in New York, Governor Cuomo is out there campaigning on lower taxes, getting tax breaks to bring businesses here. Well, if that works for, for them on, on, the, on the bigger schedule, why wouldn't it work for Democrats nationally? I think that it would. I think that historically, Eric, that has kind of not been the, quote, liberal agenda, but they have obviously got to get an economic message. I don't know how many times I've got to say it uh, for them to One connect with voters. One more time. <laughs> Democrats, get an economic <laughs> message, connect with voters, right? Uh, and you're exactly right. Cuomo gets that. Uh, Bloomberg got that. Th that is going to be the only way to remedy uh, the unemployment and bringing back uh, money in people's pockets. I, I think we agree we need lower taxes. We all agree with that here. But Trump can't do that on his own. You know, he needs help from Congress. He needs help from the other Republicans and the other Democrats. So he's doing as much as he can, I think, by himself, like that uh, order he passed for every Which, one new regulation to get slashed. Very quickly, though, we've got to do a report economy. card on the economy. You start with greats. A plus. Okay. Kat? I, I, I don't know. I think it's, and I don't want to pick a specific letter grade. Um, I'm so radical and uh, such an ideologue when it comes to government involvement that it'd have to be pretty, pretty severe for me to give an A, but I would say probably a B. I'd say B. Oh, I won't do, I'll do 100% then. Okay. I'll I mean, because I'm, I'm trying to find one economic indicator that has gone down under President Trump. I can't find one yet. I, I really don't think I see any either. I do think there's still some projecting going on. So for that, I'll give him an A minus. Uh, no, no, it's A plus <laughs> plus. Happy face, the check, and three plus marks. You know, if you're doing elementary grades, it is a very good start with the economy. And it's right, partially perception and attitude, but also a business guy in charge. Bottom line is this, my colleagues in the Congress, my former colleagues, enjoy this July 4th break. You need to stay through August to get these things done to realize the tax reform and tax <laughs> Good luck. Right. That's a powerful <laughs> mandate here. Now, last but certainly not least, the issue of immigration and refugees. You remember the build the wall chants from then candidate Trump's rallies. Well, immigration has been at the forefront of his agenda from issuing a travel ban to requesting funds to start building that infamous wall he's talked so much about. But all part of his buy American and hire American plan. But he says it's less about keeping people out than keeping Americans safe. Take a listen. The media these people like to talk about separating families, but the families they never talk about are the American families separated forever from the ones they love because we don't protect our borders and uphold the immigration laws of the United States. I promise those families the deaths of their loved ones will not have been in vain and that we will take strong and forceful action to fulfill our sacred duty to save and protect American lives. Okay, Eric, obviously uh, we all know about Kate Steinle and so many other Americans who have been taken from us because of the acts of not just only undocumented uh, people here, but people that are violent, uh, horrendous people that come into our country. So I think on that issue, most people can agree that's a good thing. So three things happened la last week and, and into this week. Uh, the travel ban was upheld, at, the, at least portions of it were upheld at the Supreme Court. That was very good. That's a win for Donald Trump. Also, he's talked about fast removal of two million criminals criminal illegal aliens that's going to go forward that that's going to make the country safer and then this late last week we heard that he, there's a there are actually prototypes of the wall being built and I'm very happy about that because that wall or the threat of that wall has actually brought illegal immigration down. I, I'm going to give him an A across the board. Eric, though, how do you feel about the $20 million price tag to those uh, Billion. prototypes? To, to, excuse me. Oh, the, oh, for, the, for the prototypes. prototypes. Mexico's going to pay. Okay. 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 <laughs> Kristen, on that note. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, I'm a little skeptical that he's going to get funding for the wall, but Trump has completely changed the whole dialogue when it comes to illegal immigration. He was saying things on the campaign trail that other Republicans were too cowardly to say. Mm -hmm. He addressed real concerns of Americans. I mean, under Obama, we were letting hundreds of thousands of convicted illegals just go on U.S. As, as the guy who wrote the Enforcement First yeah. Act of 2006, this is music to my ears. This is why Donald Trump is the president of the United States. And if he starts to back away from this, there'll be real problems. But right now, A+. Plus. Kat, bringing you in here, but Kristen, I don't know. There's a lot of people in uh, predominantly Hispanic communities that called Obama the deporter-in-chief, I think, for a reason. But go ahead, Kat. Yeah, I, it's hard to know what to think yet because my favorite thing about his immigration a performance on immigration so far is that there is no wall yet. I like that there's no wall because it's so expensive and I think that there are many better ways that we could take care of the issue. For example, removing some of the welfare incentives, free market ways to do that without having to spend money on a wall so we would save money twice that way. Uh, again, Trump and his attitude in itself has been enough to keep uh, records of rates of illegal immigration lower. So yeah, the threat going to take wall. the lock off your door? We're going to take down the fence around the White House. We're going to take down the barriers in front of the Capitol. Border security is national security. I don't disagree with the other economic incentives that are perverse, but you have to get things done to control our borders. So Donald Trump hasn't put the wall up. You're right, but he's going to. The fact that immigration illegal immigration is down 70 percent or so, yeah. Donald Trump is the wall. I'm not going to stop locking correct. my door, but I'm also not going to buy a lock that costs billions and billions of dollars that won't even keep <laughs> everybody on, from on. coming in anyway. Well, well, no, uh, we've got more to come. Yeah. Look at this, 4th of July edition of the Fox News Specialist. Eric Bowling sits down with President Trump and breaks down his concerns about North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. And later, Kat has a list, and she's taking the temperature of what American people, what other big holidays America should be celebrating. This is a packed show, guys. Stay with us. Welcome back to this very special edition of the Fox News Specialist, Politics, Justice, and Scandal. Our specialists today are Kristen Tate and J.D. Hayworth. We will continue now with the justice portion of the show. So this is a brand new segment of the show. It's called Celebrity Justice, a collection of some of the most high-profile celebrities and their legal woes. So now we want to break down two cases and get thoughts from our panel. The first case is the most popular right now, and that is Bill Cosby. After 30 hours of deliberation, the jury of that case was unable to offer a guilty verdict, and there was indeed a mistrial. Now he's facing a new legal challenge, this time in California, a lawsuit accusing him of sexually assaulting a teen at the Playboy Mansion over 40 years ago. Okay, so Eric, again, this woman is claiming that when she was only 15 years old, she was at the Playboy Mansion and was forced to uh, perform lewd acts on Bill Cosby, but again, a 40-year-old case. Can, can I ask you, is there a statute of limitations on any of this? Civilly, no. So that's why she wasn't able to bring uh, criminal charges. The only woman out of the 60-plus... So this is a money verdict. This is a money verdict. This is, a, this is, a money verdict. This right. is not criminal gotcha. at all. He's got no more criminal charges except for, I will say that the case with Andrew Constand will be retried, the prosecutor announced. Criminal, yeah. Uh, Criminally. But civilly, do you think that a juror is going to struggle Listen, proving I, this 40 I, years later? There are so many accusers of this guy. I mean, if, if the, I think they need to keep keep digging. They're going to they're gonna eventually get him. Get something will uh, crack. Kristen, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of uh, particularly women feel that with 60 plus voices saying something happened, when there's smoke, there's fire, yeah. but a 40-year-old case uh, can be very hard to prove in a court of law. Yeah, you know, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know anything about the legal aspect of this, but just from a PR perspective, this is so sad. It's like I've lost all respect for Bill Cosby. I used to really like his character on The Cosby Show. You know, he stood for a lot of good values like the family unit and uh, overcoming hardship. So this is horrible but I also noticed like as soon as these allegations came out he started walking with a cane and he says he can't see well now so I think he's still doing some acting Ooh, okay cat yeah Bill Cosby is a serial rapist okay there's not I don't you believe that nearly how you feel about I don't I don't believe that nearly 60 women are lying and whenever I say something like this I always hear from people on Twitter sometimes to say well it's innocent till proven guilty it's like yeah 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 in a court of law not in a court of public opinion and these cases can 
can be really hard to prove. And I think that the best thing we can do is, you know, maybe punish him from a civil, social, culture, in a cultural way by coming out and saying, obviously, I don't care who you were on TV. I don't care how cute everyone thought you were back in the day. More, or nearly 60 women are not lying. You are a sick, serial, rapist, disgusting pig, and you should go away. What amazes me, Ebony, is the the fact that his attorneys and I guess his PR con consultants say, well, now he's going to go on the lecture circuit oh, and I, tell yeah. young people, uh, hey, kids, don't get involved in this kind of thing. Uh, memo to Bill, and this is tragic because you've gone from a, from a comic, really like, like a Jack Benny kind of icon for a different generation now to a, a horrific sense of shame. But But the bottom line is we don't need lectures from Bill Cosby. I don't think that college circuit, what's he going to do, rework that whole Noah God thing? Don't do that, well, right? I mean, it's well, just, it's well, not going to work. Particularly right, J.D., when we know that he's going to be standing trial again for the same issue. And I will say the civil case, fortunately, has a lower standard of proof, legally speaking. Uh, you don't have to get to beyond a reasonable doubt, just a preponderance of evidence. So maybe th they might see uh, some verdict there. But our other case in celebrity justice today is the saga of O.J. Simpson. Goodness, a parole hearing will be conducted from the Carson City office of the Nevada Board of Parole Commissioners on July 20th. Now, O.J. is currently serving a 9 to 33 year sentence for assault, burglary, robbing and kidnapping. So, Eric, remember, uh, he was found uh, not guilty of the yeah. tragic killings of Nicole uh, Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. But many people felt he was uh, thrown the book on this case where he's trying to, like, steal back his assets or whatever, uh, because many people felt he got away with murder. Oh, it's kind of like legal karma mm -hmm. coming back. Yeah. I, and and I, I remember that. I remember the Bronco chase. I remember that whole that whole trial. It was amazing. And when it came down to I'm like, who didn't know when a bloody glove dries, it's going to dry tighter and smaller and you'll never be able to get it over a rubber glove. Can I tell you? Remember, do you remember how important you, that testimony Yeah, was? and Chris Darden, by the way, God bless him, I think he did the best he could. He is still not really recovered from that. That was, I think, a tragic, tragic misstep by the prosecution. It just gave the jury a reason to, to, to go with a, a, a not guilty verdict. Yeah. Kristen, uh, I'm not sure how much of the, you, this case you remember. Uh, I know that we were a little <laughs> bit younger. I saw the younger. documentary on Netflix. <laughs> okay, well, you know, you got the gist. And you're qualified to weigh in. You got, yeah, you got yeah. the gist. You know, not many people can say they got away with murder. He can. It's unbelievable to me that he got a second chance and he blew it. Yeah. I mean, what a dummy. Boy. But uh, I heard if he gets out, he and Casey Anthony, this is serious, might do a reality show. Oh, no. So I kind of want him to get out just so oh, I can watch that. No. <laughs> you, you know, it, it's amazing when we think back to that chase because uh, I was a candidate for Congress. I was doing a fundraiser in Flagstaff, Arizona. We're getting things set up, and that chase comes on television. And it just, it's it so cut interesting. It into how an NBA Finals is, game, yeah. by the yeah. way. Yeah. That's how, how serious and, it was. And, and like sports, uh, I know you're the attorney. I'm not a lawyer. Don't play one on TV. But this whole case here was the make good, the officials, quote, getting it right in terms of public perception. That's why he sits uh, in the slammer now. Yeah. Right. Obviously, I think the sentence there was supposed to punish him for him getting away with murder. I just, like, to your point, I just don't know how you get away with murder and then decide that armed robbery is a good idea. I don't, you know, there's no stuff worth that. I, I advise my clients when they get acquitted to just uh, kind of fall back and lay low. Yes. But coming up, The Swamp. That's the title of Eric Bowling's new book, and we'll delve right into some of the most compelling parts of it. Up next, Eric takes the wheel. Stay with us. You can jump right in. Let the music pull you in. Well, my new book, The Swamp, is already off to a fantastic start thanks to you, the fans, and the view crew. Really appreciate that. And The Swamp wouldn't exist without DC's long history of scandals and politics. So as I was working on the book, I was fascinated by what I learned about Senator Ted Kennedy and his infamous car crash in 1969 with Mary Jo Kopechny. Now, J.D., I'll start with you because uh, you, you may remember some of this. I'm of a certain age, yes. Yeah, yeah, well, in the sixth no, but you, grade. you know what blew me away about this, well, it, it, uh, doing the homework for the book, is that Ted Kennedy was with five of his friends, all married men, all married elected officials, with six very young single women at the time, partying, having a, a cocktail party. Kennedy leaves, peels off of Mary Jo Kopechny, drives the car into the water. The car goes underwater. He gets out because he's a good swimmer, but sits on the edge of the water for a period of time. 
self-admittedly sits there and decides not to go help her, but instead go back to the party, have a cocktail. Most people knew about that part. Then he do, does something amazing. He goes back to his hotel room, has a drink, and complains about the loud noise in his, in his hotel. The next morning, when the coroner exhumed, got the body out of the water, the coroner said that she was alive in that car for a period of time and could have been saved. I, I think back about that. I think back about his televised address. He gave a speech. Uh, words that I sat there, my lungs filling with water, and, and he gave this dramatic reenactment. This is horrible. It is sordid. But even greater concern to me is what Ted Kennedy did in 1984, sitting down with the then Soviet saying, now look, we got to get rid of this Reagan guy and we'll go for a nuclear freeze. That to me, in terms of public morality, is a far more egregious sin. But the human dimension of what happened to Chappaquiddick is something that, that cost Kennedy the presidency. And, and the reason why I started the book with this, Ebony, is that the, the, the point is that the, she died. Everyone knew about it. But yet he was reelected several times. And I think that I'm really glad you wrote this book, Eric, because people's memories can be very short. And people kind of reinvent their legacies as, as they would have them. But, you know, people need to be reminded of the history and reminded of the truth and reminded of the, the complexities of some of these people that we prop up because of their elected officials. Uh, and, and they are more more complex than that. Mm -hmm. Swamp is deeper, murky. You know, the, the swamp, the, the Capitol building, DC was built on a literal swamp. Right. They drained that swamp to build the building, but they left the metaphorical swamp to fester and get bigger. And right. Darker and darker. Absolutely. Corruption is so much corruption is allowed and people get away with it. They'll defend it. Something like Ted Kennedy really does show that. I mean, that's disgusting, Hard especially right. because did he not think people were going to find out? It wasn't like if she stays there, then nobody notices she's gone. I mean, it just shows this level of comfort that you can have if you feel like it's impossible for anyone to take you down. Well, he was you a Kennedy. Exactly. You know, remember, and, it and shows. He, he testified, Kat, that he sat there on the bank of the river while she was in that car thinking about his political exactly, future. Exactly. Right. It's when you have such a comfort level in politics and privilege that way that you kind of almost cease to be a human being. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kristen, uh, the swamp, it's, it's almost like everyone in D.C. is for sale. Yeah, first of all, congrats on the book. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, this is the epitome of the swamp. There seems to be two levels of justice, one for, you know, the politically con connected and then one for the rest of us. And I think a more modern version of this is what we saw with Hillary Clinton. You know, she used an unsecured email server illegally and then she had her mobile devices destroyed that were subpoenaed by Congress. They're untouchable, these bureaucrats. So I'm glad you wrote this book. And, People got to know about this. Ebony, I'll, I'll, I'll just point out that Donald Trump, after a, a segment on the uh, Fox and Friends on the Swamp, retweeted the, the, the book about the oh, book. Yeah. It took off. But, but Matt Drudge put it up on his very, very influential news huge. website. That and that huge. was that's how the book really. Yeah. I mean, the book is just doing phenomenal, Eric. And we talked about it before the show. The timeliness of this. I really credit you with that, my friend, because it's right on time and it's on the pulse of America. Thank right Thank you now. very much. Thank you, everybody, for buying it and Amazon and whatever. Anyway, when we return, <laughs> we circle back with our specialist, J.D. Hayworth and Kristen Tate. Be right back. Everywhere around the world, they come to America. Every time that flag's unfurled, they come to America. Got a dream to take them there. They come to America. Got a dream they come to share. Let's circle back with our specialist, J.D. Hayworth and Kristen Tate. All right, Kristen, I know that you said that you were a specialist in being a Ron Paul groupie. groupie. I am too. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, do you have any like swagger, like or swag rather, ran, ran, a Ron Paul swag? Absolutely. Yeah, I like too. sleep in Ron Paul pajamas. Mm. <laughs> that man is God to me. Right. Everything that comes out of his mouth is gold. I do it too. I do it too. I have a big oversized t-shirt with a squirrel <laughs> on it that says get angry, vote for Dr. Paul. Yeah, it's a Ron Paul ran. groupie thing. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad I'm not alone. <laughs> wow. I'm is, on the is outside there no of lunch that. Box? Yeah. Gotta have the Ron Paul, Ron Paul I'm on the outside box. of that. I want to circle back with you, J.D. I know yeah. that you were very disappointed that we did not get to your chosen holidays for well, Cats on the Street Now, segment. Now, technically, Cat on the Street, great segment, Thank Kat, you. by the <laughs> way. But, but on this July 4th, a modest proposal that we really start to celebrate September 17th, Constitution Day. Technically, it's a holiday, but we don't give it the reverence we need. Catherine Drinker Bowen wrote the book in 1966, Miracle at Philadelphia. 
and our Constitution is a miracle that we continue to enjoy. As Dr. Franklin said, we have a republic if you can. Every day is Constitution Day for me. So. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Kristen, uh, so you love Ron Paul. How, what do you think of his son, Rand Paul? I like Rand, too. I think he's sold out on some of the libertarian ideology, but I love him. I love that he's in the Senate. We need that. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm for anyone who's for smaller government. I want all the Republicans to come together and just work for lower regulation, lower taxes. So I'm all for well, Rand. Poor Rand Paul, man. Doesn't that suck to live in the shadow of your father? <laughs> I mean, oh, my God. He's, he's doing okay. He's doing all right. He's doing all right. He's got to go on Some of us have thought like about that. going to the Senate, right, Eric? So, you know, I mean, he's doing okay. <laughs> all right, thank you to our Fox News specialists today, J.D. Hayworth and Kristen Tate. And we thank you all for watching. Make sure to follow us on social media at Specialist FNC on Twitter and Facebook. Remember, 5 o'clock will never be the same. Special Report is next.